Welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about a little story about Culver City Boys versus Venice 13. In the late afternoon on October 25th, 2008, Christina Manon drove her Honda Civic to the Mar Vista Gardens housing project where she picked up her boyfriend, Mauricio Contreras. After driving around for a while, she picked up two other males near Mar Vista Gardens, one whom she described as a skinny and one chubby. Manon later identified Napoles as the skinnier male who sat behind her in the backseat of her car. She, she did not identify anyone as the chubbier male who sat behind Contreras in the backseat. At trial, Manon states she did not believe Flores was the chubbier male who rode into her car and rode away from the scene of the crimes. David Napoles and Miguel Flores are the defendants in this case. Manon drove her car following directions from one of the passengers in the back seat. She stopped the car in an alley adjacent to a laundromat and liquor store in the Mar Vista area of Los Angeles. The two rear passengers exited her car and walked toward the store. It was around 8 p.m. Brothers Edgar and Guillermo Lopez exited the liquor store and were approached by two Hispanic males, one of whom Edgar described as slim and one chubby, each carrying a gun. The slim male, who Edgar later identified as Napoles, was holding a black semi autic handgun and asked the brothers about their gang affiliation. The brothers stated they did not belong to a gang. Napoles smirked and indicated he believed the brothers were from Venice. Napoles and the chubby male who Edgar later identified as Flores began firing their guns at the brothers. The chubby male was holding a chrome revolver. Both brothers were struck by gunfire. Guillermo died from gunshot wounds to his chest and back. Edgar suffered gunshot wounds to his right legs as he tried to run away. Manon did not observe the shooting, but she heard six or seven gunshots. Napoles and the chubby male ran back to her car and climbed inside. Manon drove toward Mar Vista Gardens. She dropped off the two men in different locations and then returned with Contreras to his residence. After the 911 call, several officers arrived outside Diaz's house and searched for the man she had described. A male around 19 years old with a faded hairstyle, wearing a gray shirt and gray jeans. Officers detained two men, but Diaz stated neither was the man she had seen with the gun. An officer in a helicopter observed a male in a light-colored shirt and dark pants running from behind Diaz's house towards another residence. The officer shined a spotlight from the helicopter to illuminate the area. The officer saw the man either knocking on or trying to enter a window at the house next door to Diaz's house. Eventually, the man sat down in a lawn chair. After being captured, officers placed Napoles in a patrol car. He told an officer he was a Culver City gang member and his moniker was Noodles. After firearm ballistics training and forensic science, in July 2009, the jury found Napoles and Flores guilty of the first degree murder of Guillermo Lopez in the willful, deliberate, premeditated attempt at murder of Edgar Lopez. The trial court sentenced Napoles to life plus 75 years to life in prison, 25 years to life for the murder, plus a consecutive term of 25 years to life for the firearm enhancement. A term of life for attempted murder plus a consecutive term of 25 years to life for the firearm enhancement. Flores was sentenced to 50 years to life in prison, 25 years to life for the murder, plus a consecutive term of 25 years to life for the firearm enhancement. At approximately 8 p.m. on January 28, 2016, Mario Ruiz was outside of his Venice apartment on 7th Avenue between Sunset Boulevard and Flower Avenue when he saw his friend Mark Gonzalez and Gonzalez's girlfriend Lori Martinez. The couple was arguing. Upon reaching the intersection of 7th and Flower Avenues, Gonzalez crossed the street while Martinez lagged behind him at the corner store. Ruiz watched as the SUV stopped between Gonzalez and Martinez. The SUV had two people in the front and one in the back. The rear passenger got out of the SUV and approached Gonzalez. After announcing that he was from Culver City, the passenger used a handgun to fire multiple shots from a distance of approximately 10 feet. The shooter returned to the SUV and it drove away from the scene in eastbound direction. Responding officers found Gonzalez unresponsive on the ground. Nine spent 40 caliber casings were near his body. Gonzalez died as a result of a gunshot wound to the back of his head. He sustained a gunshot second wound to his heel. On March 24, 2016, 
Aaron Villanueva was resting at his home in LA. He was wearing a t-shirt, the back of which had a photograph of Tommy Luna, a fallen Culver City gang member, believed to be killed by Venice 13 prior to the charged homicide. They searched his home, found some Culver City graffiti and clothing worn by members of the gang. The home's garage contained a 45 caliber Glock handgun. They also found caliber bullets of without his 40 cal. The same caliber used to kill Gonzalez. They also recovered his cell phone during the search. Cell tower information supported an inference that Villanueva's phone traveled from his home toward the scene of the shooting on the evening of the murder. Cell tower information also placed Villanueva's phone in the same area at the time of the February 2016 arrest of his homie. Other information showed that the very same day Villanueva's phone was used to call Soto's phone before Goody used the phone at jail to speak with Soto. After his arrest, Villanueva was placed in the jail cell with the undercover informant, a Hispanic male who was a former gang member. Before putting Villanueva in the cell, he was told he was under arrest for murder, that his homies were talking about him, that witnesses identified him, and that the police had his phone records. Villanueva was not told that Venice 13 gang member was killed, where the murder occurred, or any details about the victim or shooting. He was put in the cell and sat on top bunk while the agent was on the bottom bunk. During the recorded conversation, Villanueva told the informant that he had a member of the Culver City gang. Villanueva said that there was rivalry between his gang and Venice 13, the two gangs frequently shooting at each other. He claimed that his hood, Culver City, was winning because Tommy Luna was the only person from his gang who had been killed, although Villanueva repeatedly told the undercover informant that he had not committed the charged murder. About 45 minutes into the interview, they removed Villanueva from the jail cell and told him that the murder occurred in January 2016. After Villanueva returned to his cell, he told the informant that his homie was not with them and only knew hearsay. On November 20th, 2019, a jury convicted Aaron Villanueva of first-degree murder and found true allegations that the crime was gang-related and that Villanueva personally intentionally discharged a firearm causing death for his hood. On January 30th, 2020, the trial court sentenced Villanueva to a term of 25 years to life for the murder, plus a consecutive term of 25 years to life on the firearm enhancement for a total term of 50 years to life in state prison. This next case we're going to talk about involves Culver City gang members Leo Anthony Reyes and Sergio Ginez. This next case we're going to talk about involves Culver City gang members Leo Anthony Reyes and Sergio Ginez. The shooting was near a police substation a block and a half from Venice Beach. Venice 13 claims this territory. What happened next was Reyes and Janez drove up to the parked Camaro, which was blue. Surviving victim Juan Cortez, who was 21 at the time, was in the Camaro with Victor Rodriguez and Jose Acosta. Cortez wore blue shorts, a blue shirt, and a blue hat. Cortez heard someone say, Where are you from, Messe? Cortez knew the question was about gangs. He looked left and saw Janez holding a gun. He was about to say, I don't bang, meaning I'm not a gang. Janez opened fire without waiting for more words. He shot 15 bullets into the Camaro. Five hit Cortez. When the shooting stopped, Cortez asked his friend Rodriguez, Are you okay? But Rodriguez was leaning in his seat, throwing up blood, did not say anything. Acosta was in the front passenger seat, trying to open the door. Police arrived three or four minutes after the shooting. Rodriguez and Acosta died at the scene. Victims Cortez, Rodriguez, and Acosta were not Venice 13 members. Janez took them for Venice 13 because they were young Hispanic men showing blue on Venice 13 soil, so he shot them all. After the 911 call went out, police saw a matching vehicle that was described in the call. It was a 2004 Maroon Mercedes Benz, no rear license plate. Police ferried witnesses from Venice to the La Tijera scene for a field show up. The witnesses identified Janez, Reyes, and the Mercedes. Wounded victim Cortez went straight to the hospital, but later picked Janez from a six person photo display, then identified him again at trial. When police searched the Mercedes, they found a red bandana. They found four cartridges matched the 9mm caliber and the branding of the 15 9mm shells left at the shooting scene. Police found no gun. 
the jury convicted Janez of two counts of first degree murder. The jury also found true allegations that one counts and two, Janez committed multiple murders intentionally fired from a motor vehicle intending to kill. Janez was sentenced to two consecutive life without parole terms, plus 70 years for two murders. Reyes was sentenced to 40 years to life on the count of one murder and gun enhancement. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe.